Uh, hi guys, this is Pedro Delfino and I thought about recording some videos showing some cool tricks with the Nix browser but then I realized that maybe I should do a video before presenting what is next in my opinion so in a certain way Nix is a web browser and you probably know about the web browser right these are the more popular ones and you even have these other browsers like Vivaldi, Opera and Brave which are more like theoretically privacy oriented if you go deeper you can find stuff like Tor and even Lynx which I could not find a logo but it's the oldest browser that I know it is only text oriented but okay all these programs uh, they are roughly trying to achieve the same thing but the way they do it it's pretty different and well if we try to understand the spirit of next it might be better to look to two classical text editors the Emacs and Vim because they represent uh, the next spirit better than the browsers that I showed a few seconds ago because these text editors they are really optimized for configurations and tinkering. So I will show eight cool things about Nix in this octagon. The first cool thing is that Nix is really privacy oriented. The company behind Nix, Atlas Engineer, uh, the only data they have about the users is basically the number of downloads. And you can even download Nix without their knowledge. The second cool thing about Nix is that it is free software and open source so you can study it and change the code as you like it. Another cool thing about Nix is that it is keyboard oriented. You can use the mouse to surf the web but if you use the keyboard, if you learn the key bindings and stuff, you're going to do things faster. Another cool thing about Nix is that it is an infinitely extensible software so think of it as a platform that you can build uh, stuff over it like with a bunch of extensions you have full access to the internals of the browser there is no like browser apis to, to build extensions like you would have if you tried something with firefox or google chrome another cool thing about next is that it is built with common lisp and common lisp is a very introspectable language so you can examine things while the program is running and you can change things on the fly so live codeability is something that fits together with uh, hacking stuff changing the state of stuff all these things together that I said so far they make you uh, build the browser self-made for yourself and this can really leverage your use of the browser's desert and make you more productive. Another cool thing about Nix is that it is a very minimalistic design, so you won't see a lot of buttons and things to click in and click out. You just use a keyboard and do things smoothly. And lastly, but not least, uh, the Nix architecture is really interesting because it represents a decoupling from the web engine to the browser itself. Nix is agnostic to the browser engine. So all of these things combine to what I think is the heart of Nix, which is giving power to the users. You become kind of a wizard, a powerful wizard to do cool stuff with your browser. So that's it guys, this is the first video, maybe this is the beginning of the next academy or the next academia, something like more like sounds like Greek stuff and that's it. I hope I will record some videos showing how to install, there are at least four ways that I know that you can install next, you can do some troubleshooting, getting started, live coding with common lisp, inside it, Emacs, slime stuff. Uh, that's it. Stay tuned.